given the status of the economy, by all measures, uh, jobs, job creation is up, unemployment is down, GDP is up, why do Americans need tax reform? The reality is when you actually talk about the specifics of tax reform, doubling the standard deduction, so the first $24,000 of everybody's income is tax-free. When you talk about simplification, doubling the child tax credit to $2,000. When you talk about lowering the rates across the board, which is what we've done on the individual, individual side. When you talk about lowering the corporate tax rate to a point where we're now going to be underneath the average of our international competitors so American companies and workers could start winning again. Uh, all of these provisions actually drive up support for tax reform. So tax reform is good for the economy and good for Americans, that's what you're saying. There's absolutely no doubt that in the year the president's been in office, we've seen two consecutive quarters of 3% GDP growth. That's amazing when you consider that under the Obama administration, the average for all eight years was under 2%. A huge goal of tax reform is to keep that sustained 3% GDP growth, GDP growth number because that's what creates jobs, that's what creates opportunity, that's what expands the, the economy to the point where more Americans get to participate in prosperity and the good aspects. There are some parts of the tax reform that are really troubling to our home area of the Westchester County area, the Hudson Valley area, New York, New Jersey, that tri-state area. And that is that, as you are aware, that there is going to be a limit on the amount of state and local taxes that can be deducted. That limit is about $10,000. And for mortgage interest, if you have a home under $750,000, you can deduct the mortgage interest, but anything above that, uh, you cannot. How is that good and beneficial for people in states like New York and New Jersey? And we're both New Yorkers. How is that beneficial? Let's be absolutely clear about something. New Yorkers pay high taxes because New York is a high tax state, because Albany has very high taxes that we levy on both the income tax side and that they force down onto our counties on the, and that raises our taxes on the property tax side. If you think of Westchester County, 87 cents of every dollar spent is an unfunded mandate from Albany. So there are a lot of structural reforms that have to happen in capitals like Albany, like Sacramento, like Trenton, where you have these high tax states that basically put a lot of the tax burden on local taxpayers. Now, the federal government for a while has been allowing the deduction of local and state taxes. We continue to allow that to happen, but we cap it at $10,000. And you could apply that to either the property tax side, which is a bigger issue for New Yorkers, or the income tax side, which is a bigger issue for Californians, for example, who have a 13% rate. But there is a fundamental problem where you have this deduction that Washington gives very few people. This is generally a tax deduction that benefits a very handful of people who are high income earners in high tax states um, when you are trying to create a 50 state tax policy. So when I refer to this, and again, I live in Westchester, as you point out, I'm very sensitive to the concerns, but look, I'm, I'm very confident that by the doubling of my standard deduction, by the lowering of my top marginal rate in taxes and lowering the rates across the board, that makes up well makes up for what you may lose in a deduction here or there. Uh, on the mortgage interest, it's very important to understand, if you have an existing mortgage, you're grandfathered in. So this does not affect you if you currently hold a mortgage. Isn't it always been a Republican ideology that uh, debt is bad and increasing your debt is bad? Why? Is, doesn't this tax reform bill add to the, to the deficit? And how is that a good thing? We, we are very concerned about the direction that we've taken, especially in the last eight years during the previous administration, where you've seen $10 trillion added to the debt. That's a doubling of the debt. We're now around $20 uh, trillion. What's also been bad is at the same time as this high debt, you've had stagnant and suboptimal growth which has been the worst thing in, as far as addressing our deficit and debt problem. The only way to solve a debt problem this big is to grow our economy in, in a meaningful way. So when you go from where we are right now, around 2% growth to 3% growth, that's trillions of dollars of economic activity that leads to a large sum of revenue to the government that goes toward deficit reduction. So the only way, Richard, we're going to solve such a major debt and deficit issue is by growing the economy. Is there any accountability, for example, for large corporations who may seek to buy more of their shares back or provide more uh, money to their uh, CEOs or, or uh, executive uh, board members? Uh, is there anything in stopping these corporations from taking that money, that excess money that they get, those savings, and not reinvesting in job creation? Look, look the goal 
of changing from worldwide to territorial and, and deeming, forcing uh, repatriation of trillions of dollars. We estimate it close to $5 trillion of, of American companies' profits overseas is certainly not to go toward just dividends or buybacks, okay? Although I will say, a lot of people who are in pension programs, public pension programs, benefit from the growth of the stock market and the growth of, obviously, what happens there. Some of these tax reforms are not permanent in nature. Some of them only last for 10 years. For example, the uh, drop from 39 to 37% in terms of the tax brackets. Why, what is not permanent and why not? So what you have now is the corporate side's permanent because when you're changing the entire system from worldwide to territorial, you have to create permanence or else you're not gonna have the desired effect. On the individual side, you know, while we did want Democrats to support this and help us make the middle income tax cuts permanent, we feel we now have them till 2025. And look, we have eight to nine years of, of Democrats and Republicans working together to make these middle income uh, provisions more permanent. You know, what happened with the Bush tax cuts, they were temporary, but President Obama continued them because they're a good policy. So we hope at the very least that will happen, or even better, that we might have an opportunity in the future to make more permanent lower taxes for all Americans. Tony, it's been great. Assistant Secretary, U.S. Treasury, Public Affairs, thank you so much.